So, all right. Um, welcome. Good evening, everyone. My name is Dr. Esther Schmidt. I'm the director of the Center for Historic Houses. Thank you very much for coming, taking the time. I'm delighted to have you. We like to keep our sessions very interactive. So we um, please, you know, use the opportunity of the chat window, for example, to ask questions or to make comments. Um, please send a greeting from where you are. Uh, we love to hear from you. Um, if you have a question, perhaps you can just type a cue in front of the question so it's easier for us to find and respond to the questions because usually we have a number of questions and um, it, um, it's, it, it will help us. So tonight we have a very special evening. Each of our lectures um, has the same format but at the same time is also different. So each historic house has a unique different story. As a center for historic houses, we care not only about the architecture, but we care about the people who bring the buildings to life, who have an impact on the architecture, on the design, on the life in and around the historic house. We also have a great interest in the collection of historic houses and we really care about the future of historic houses as well. So the center is um, a first institution in India similar to the European Historic Houses Associations that form kind of partnerships between um, the historic houses in India and the center. So we help to do lobby, to promote historic houses, to research um, historic houses in their collections, and to also organize kind of business models advice on this. It is also special that we collaborate with other centers in, 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 in the world, especially in Europe. We are in touch with the European Historic Houses Association and the Historic House Association in the UK and various other heritage networks because we believe that such an exchange will actually create um, you know best practice. This, uh, let me uh, start uh, and uh, share my screen so you can see it a little bit better. So, so we will start um, um, by um, having a little introduction about the center then I'll talk about the uh, lecture series, then I'll introduce our wonderful um, participants today. We have three. We have um, members from the um, um, erstwhile royal family of Jamnagar. Jamnagar is a very famous historic house, but it is also a house that is it's not, not very well known. So we'll actually be hearing um, some unique stories. And also it is very special because our guests today um, are over 80 and have experienced um, a huge kind of aspect of history, <laughs> um, including the aspect of the princely estates and the transition to independent India. And I think this is really uh, unique to have this. So the lecture series is part of our knowledge exchange um, initiative where we have owners of historic houses who share first-hand insights into their story of the family and the historic house. And so it's not really an academic talk, but it's really the power of storytelling that we will hear and some extraordinary stories we are going to hear today because Jamnagar has a number of fascinating stories, whether it is sports, uh, cricket, whether it is uh, jewels and the wonderful um, um, relationship with Cartier, uh, whether it is the humanitarian aspect, which is a unique story. And today we've also um, invited um, um, Anu Radha, who created a wonderful documentary about this story. So we really hope to have this multifaceted approach and uh, uh, you know, history of the palace. And uh, we are really, really honored and glad to have members of the family. We have the oldest uh, daughter of the uh, Jam Saab, and she will say a few words in a minute. And we have her cousin as well, who will be sharing her insights. So we thought today we can maybe talk about childhood and the beautiful childhood of growing up in a, in a princely estate and in all the palaces of Jamnagar and look at the um, kind of building history from this perspective and then lead over to the Polish children whom the Maharaja saved. So the center um, has a very uh, strong um, social media presence so we also use 
the, uh, the lecture series to announce um, our latest news and so on. So the lecture series Resilience, Historic Houses of India and Their Custodians is something that we started during the lockdown in, in July and August. We have this lecture series every Friday evening at 8 p.m. In September, we will be organizing a round table, which will be a strategy discussion to discuss uh, uh, business proposals that are not necessarily dependent on visitors because historic houses and especially tourism have taken a very serious hit during the pandemic. We will be doing this jointly with historic houses in Europe and in India and some heritage managers. In October, we will be starting um, a year-long uh, workshop series with various colleagues in um, academia and um, heritage to discuss heritage interpretation schemes because we really want to focus on the young generation as well and the old to share and ex exchange knowledge and um, to talk about heritage and local history and um, collaborate with schools and various museums. And um, ongoing is um, our project with um, water and heritage. We are particularly interested in lake palaces, but many other aspects of water and heritage as well. And another focus of our research is um, um, British architecture and architecture on uh, a fusion between East and West in India. We are currently looking at the furniture and interior design of Russia, Russia Party Bhavan, designed by Sir Edwin Lutyens. And actually, we will also find out today that Lutyens is associated with Jamnagar as well. Maybe not many people know about this. And we also have a number of surprises today um, for Harshit Kumari and, um, um, and all the others. Um, about Lutyens and a special photograph that was sent to me that I will be sharing today but we'll come to this in a minute. So this is something that we are currently doing also, uh, the rejuvenation of traditional water bodies in Haryana. This is something that the university is doing, Jindal University, the center is part of the uh, university there. Um, and we are collaborating with a landscape architect who uh, created actually this beautiful water garden in, um, uh, for the Meridian Hotel in Jaipur. Um, and he is collaborating with a wonderful landscape architect in the US who created uh, adventure playgrounds, for instance, the famous one in Central Garden, in the Central uh, Park in, in, uh, in, in New York City, Manhattan. So we hope to um, bring together the people, collaborate with the people in the village, rejuvenate the water bodies and also create an adventure playground for the children in the village. If you want to hear more about the center, mm -hmm. you can have a look at our webpage, which is www centerforhistorichouses.org. Our assistants will also share the address with you in the chat so you can have a look. We've had wonderful stories of different um, um, historic houses so far. Each one has a very different, unique story. We started with Bhavnagar in Gujarat and um, the young princess who, is, who started a heritage initiative working with the local children and schools. Um, we also have one um, um, property where uh, we are talking about life heritage in Mavari horses, for example. We talked about Rampur, where, um, the, historic where the family is participating in the library and sharing this knowledge with the community. And uh, we also learned a very interesting history about the peaceful collaboration and you know, uh, living together mm -hmm. between the various religious groups which was fascinating to hear, which was similar also to Mahmudabad estate. So where we can actually see that a Muslim um, could, for instance, uh, uh, work with a priest, with a Hindu priest, or vice versa, a Hindu could actually yeah. supervise the coronation uh, ceremony of the um, Nawab. So these are fascinating insights that we don't normally read about in history books. And we also learned about people who were not necessarily born in a historic house, but have a passion for historic houses and created um, a, a transition from this uh, ruin into this house, for instance, and um, you know, promoting heritage tour tourism, which many historic houses do. But to come back to the lecture series, uh, the lecture series is entitled Resilience because I couldn't think of a better and more fitting term to describe both the families and the buildings to survive wars, to survive um, illnesses, to survive uh, threats to the dynasty from, 
from um, murder attempts, assassinations, uh, from extreme climates. The list is very long. And I'd like to quote from this before I lead over to our, to, to our talk today. Although suffering and challenge demoralize some human beings, others cope and construct instead. Rather than grinding to a halt, certain people hurdle the obstacles or creatively maneuver around them. They even make something positive out of the negative situation. In the face of crisis, they not only survive, but they also thrive. With this, we are coming to um, our talk today um, about uh, Jamnaga. And perhaps we can just quickly have a word of introduction from um, Harshit Kumari. And I'm very, very pleased to have you here. And she is joining us. She is not very well. Um, so uh, we would like to start also with her. And I have a few slides and um, you can perhaps comment on some of these things. Um, I just, uh, uh, um, can we see you? Would you like to just um, address um, the audience and just say a few words? Thank you for coming and for, for being there. Good evening, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the program, Dr. Edith has arranged for us. But it's nice to know that our heritage is going to get onto the world list and people will know about us and what we have and what we have to share with them. So hopefully we will have a good time this evening getting to know what's what. I hope you enjoy yourself and I hope I will be lucid enough for you to know what I'm saying. Thank you. And uh, we've already had a number of conversations and um, I've heard the most fantastic um, stories and um, you had le you've led a very rich life of heritage preservation, being very active in INTAC um, all over India. And um, it's wonderful that you have both the family history and also this love and passion for, for heritage and even still working with the school um, at your age. So I hope when I reach your age, I'll be um, similarly fit. So I'm sure you will. <laughs> so we have a number of fascinating buildings, um, and um, I would like to start uh, with the uh, with the founder um, of the state, and we see this uh, beautiful um, um, uh, sculpture here by Hazeltine, and uh, apparently uh, Sir Edwin Lutyens was a good friend or Ranji, I just call him Ranji. Um, we will be mainly focusing on the 20th century rulers, but uh, the, this kind of statue is combining the um, founding of the state with the 20th century. And um, so Lachins, he, he traveled to Jamnaga uh, several times. And when we started our discussion and uh, talking um, to uh, the princess, uh, we didn't have any evidence, but we were so incredibly lucky to uh, uh, speak to the great granddaughter of Sir Edwin Lutyens, um, um, who is Jane uh, Whitley, who is a professor at uh, Buckingham, and she was able to unearth some letters. So we uh, we currently really have the written evidence that indeed Lutyens uh, was um, very good friends with the uh, local ruler, and he visited Jamnaga several times, and he had an impact on the architecture and on the urban planning as well. And apparently, he actually created uh, the pedestal for the statue. So he, um, and this is typical for Lachins. If you look at Rashtra Pati Bhavan, he designed every little detail from the architecture to the door handle to the clock in the nursery. And so this is another example that maybe not many people know. So these are some of the important buildings and I'll be showing some slides and then I'll be asking um, 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 to um, you know, our um, uh, uh, guests to comment on these. So we have several palaces and all of them were used by the family but they lived in some and then we'll have a, a few more details. So the oldest one is Darbergard Palace. Then we have a, a, the Lakota Fort which is fascinating. It looks actually like a lake palace and uh, Pratap Vilas Palace, a 20th century palace, and Jam Bungalow, where the family used to live. And this is something where we will be then talking about your childhood because both of you uh, actually grew up there and played there and you have your childhood memories um, you know, with, associated with this uh, palace. Then there was a summer palace, uh, like a bungalow in, in Balachedi. And of course, this will bring us to the other story the Polish children that we'll come to later. We have Willington Crescent as an 
interesting example of um, urban planning and modern urban planning. We have the hunting lodge where you spend your weekends, I understand. And um, we have the twin bungalows built for pilots where you're currently staying. So, uh, this, do you recognize this image? Uh, no, not this one. No? So I go on. This is a, from Pratap Vilas. This is in Jabnagar. This is in Jabnagar. This? What I'm, uh, this is Pratap Vilas. Yes, yes. <clears throat> So what, uh, what memories do you have? Was not well, uh, if oh, I can, water, yes, <clears throat> if I can ask you, what memories do you have of this particular place? Well, this used to be mostly the guest house for family and people who used to come and who we couldn't accommodate in the house, our house itself. And then we spent three years in it when uh, addition to our home was being built. So we stayed here and the corridors are so enormous that we used to love running around and playing games which irritated all of our parents. But we enjoyed ourselves. Sukhdev Singh was part of it at a certain stage. But by the time my younger brother was five, we had moved back to, the, to our home. The Pata Pilas remains sort of guest space. And we didn't think of it as home ever. Home was always the bungalow. Hmm. Um, this example of kind of Indo Saracenic architecture is something that we find um, a lot in India in the uh, uh, 20th century. And yes, definitely. Yes. Um, so I also heard that there were sometimes uh, movie performances there. Um, I heard about uh, King Kong and uh, Shirley Temple performances and various others. Did you also go to some of these or was this only for the adults? No, no. The, when there were films and things like that, we, we all joined in. It was collective because it was a big Darbar hall and it was a double floored uh, room. So the children were packed upstairs to see through the balcony and the adults that come to play in the, in the major room. Lovely. I heard there was a ballroom as well with a special floor um, for dancing particularly. Yes, it was called the banquet hall, but uh, after the banquet, one could have a ball, they'd remove all the tables and it used to be used as a ball hall. Did but you have a dancing lessons as a child? No. Okay. Indian. Uh, Indian dancing, yes, but not not uh, Western. Mm. So was this mainly then for European guests and these kind of balls? Well, yes, the balls were for the uh, uh, people who lived around Rajkot and Jamnagar and who were part of the British government and who would come and there would be guests coming always because we were a port state, we had lots of ports and things like that. So when people came, they had to be entertained. Thanks. Let's move on to the next slide. Um, this is a spectacular building um, uh, with the water, uh, the, the fort, um, looks like a lake palace. Uh, I understand it's now a museum. Are you um, associated with this museum or um, involved? No, I'm not associated with it. The government keeps their hands very tightly closed on all these things, but it's well maintained. I don't think there's very, very many valuable items in it. But at least it gives a cultural background to what was found around there. There were some things that were dug up out, out of mounds that dated back 2,000 years and things like that. But otherwise, it's well maintained and you can go at any time. And there are people there who show you around. How was it used in your days when you were a child? It was a summer palace kind of thing, a place where one could go and enjoy the climate, the weather, or have parties and things, mm. or use it for uh, going around in little launches and teaching people how to how to be uh, on the water. Swimming competitions for for people of Jamnagar. We used to have once a year a lot of sports every year for about ten days. It was a competition between the people of everywhere. So they all used to come. So it was used for things like that. 
and, and now we are, now we are watching our home which is called bhavendra palace not the name that you had sitting in front oh. it's called bhavendra villa right that is that is where we grew up and the other one that you see is what was the guest house in three jams before my father it was built as, i think for the viceroy when he was coming to visit and the then maharaja built this as quickly as he could and the viceroy stayed there with his wife the viceroy was extra tall so they had to make a special bed for him that could house him it was a huge bed and it's still there oh now this is just a few images of the city yeah and th this image i'm afraid is something to remember it was the open square which was done by latian to open out the city which was so encumbered is now covered and littered with small little shops that have been allowed to be built so it is just a, a mess as such you know it's not so, very attractive mm -hmm. but the mosque is very very attractive mm. and this gallery that you see is a luxury gallery that goes to willingdon crescent and on the other side also it has stopped under a gallery and continues to watch the outside port here mm. yeah, willingdon crescent which is, is reminds of delhi mm. yeah this is this is willingdon crescent Do you remember going there as a child for uh, to go shopping or something? Yes, yes, we used to go shopping there, and the upstairs were homes or offices for people who had these shops underneath. And this was near Darbar Gad. Opposite it is Darbar Gad because Willingdon Press was built out of the area that they broke from the, uh, from the Darbar Gad from the city palace. They had to break Darbar Gad to make this space. It was Latin plan was to open out the city so there would be air and light. Mm. Yes, there were health issues as well. Um, you mentioned last time uh, um, um, the plague, and um, so there were several attempts to sanitize. Um, uh, sanitize Jamnagar, and this was part of that. Right now, as you can see, they're trying to cover it up with a little thing, few little buildings inside. Hopefully, they will stop doing that. Mm. Now this is uh, the main um, um, palace. Our uh, home. Our home. Whenever I talk to uh, both of you, you mention this uh, particularly, and um, I would uh, just uh, use this. For... You will get it. And here is my surprise for you. <laughs> Do you recognize yeah. this lady? Car key, yes. Yeah, yeah, the car key. <laughs> yes, um, I was. I received this. Uh, I received this photograph. I wanted to surprise you, Nanny. Um, <laughs> and I got it from um, Francesca Cartier Brickle. I'm not. Yeah, Francesca must have given it to you because she used it in her book too. Yes. Yes. Um, Um, her uh, of her grandfather um, and uh, the, the jeweler Cartier, which uh, who has a very very close relationship with your family, and we come to this in a minute. Um, yes, they they used to come and stay in Patapena, and she <laughs> was she was my favorite. I used to go and spend as much time as I could with her. We used to have great laughs. I'd love to hear a little bit about your childhood, and maybe we could also ask your cousin. What he remembers about his childhood, what a what a day was like, uh, how he woke up in the morning, yeah, what you yes, had for breakfast. He was very good, uh, good with that. Uh, but but you can see something of my childhood here. I'm a girl, and because my brother isn't born yet, I'm dressed up in a, in the boys' clothes. I had to go on processions looking like a boy. <laughs> Hated it. 
I hated it, absolutely. <laughs> And um, yes, I mean, it must have been my birthday. This must have been my third birthday or something. This was the layout that you see at the back. Ah. It's a children's birthday party table that used to be laid out and loaded with children and food. And it's on the tennis pavilion side. So uh, we are facing, the three of us are facing the tennis court. So how did you celebrate your birthday? What did you do on your birthday? I'd love to hear this. Mm -hmm. On, on the birthday, first we had to go to the temples and do a puja and then go and pay respect to all the elders. And we had, there were my father's aunts also who were around, so we had to go to the seniority wife. And then we would come and come to our parents and they would give, give us their blessings and a present or whatever. And then we had all the other children. And cousins and everybody, older, younger, whatever. And we used to spend the whole day together of food. And, and then this was a tea party, which was to be the culmination after which we had children's game. And then the others went home, and then we went up to mummy, where Bapu would be looking after guests. And that was the end of the day. Everybody got nice clothes to wear, and we enjoyed ourselves. What kind of games did you play? Oh, well, when, when I was this stage, things like egg and spoon and putting potatoes into a bucket and things like that. But later on, as we grew up, it was proper games that we had to learn. Um, if I can now uh, go to your cousin, maybe yes. you can tell us a little bit about your childhood growing up um, in um, Jam Bangalore. And tell us about your daily life and what, your schooling and what you did and what you remember. Well, um, it really was a wonderful experience. Um, I would say pretty rare. We were a, a group of youngsters, right, along with the, the current job staff and uh, my other cousins. And um, we had a, what I would call a very wonderful life. I think you were asking as to how did you begin your day? Well, I think the way it started was, it's not that we woke up, but we were woken up. We were very well looked after as such. And immediately after that, we went, we went into our uh, exercises, doing PT, physical training, riding, walking all over, going into uh, playing games. And these exercises and these, I want to say, great fun, fun events uh, went on. We went at, at around uh, 10 o'clock. We were back. We had breakfast. We changed. And then we went, we went to school. We had a wonderful bunch of teachers. Right, including, say, Mr. Winterblythe, who uh, later moved to the Rajkumar College as principal, along uh, along with all of us, and we had Mr. Krishnamurti, who has written uh, 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 books. Uh, he was our Sanskrit teacher, right? But he was an expert in English, and I think. I remember he's written a book called The Cloth of Gold. And uh, therefore, we had uh, mathematics teachers, mostly um, our computers were in the mind. I mean, you did your sums in, in completely different way, never looking at a, a calculator. And uh, this was marvelous because then in the evening, once again, Right, we went into we were all our cricket coaching, we went riding, and we were very fortunate, frankly, in the palace that we had people like Vinu Mankad as our coach, right? And in part of our team were a lot of people who played for India Salim Durani, my cousin Indrajit Singhji, and um, so we were very fortunate in that way. 
the evenings, of course, right? I mean, you had your dinner, and then we had to go and pay respects to all the elders. Right, Sajam Sahib and Ahmadu Sahib, and that is how really the day was spent. And I might add that uh, the weekends were very special because in the weekends we went out into the countryside. Right, we went into the countryside, and we how should I put it? Um, we were, camps were set up out there. Either in Kileshwa, which you can see in, uh, in the thing on the thing at the moment, and, and other locations, Balachari, where we used to again go over the weekend. We did um, a lot of fishing, crabbing, um, of course, swimming as well. So it was very exciting. And uh, also uh, during the weekend, we did a bit of shooting, which I can't confess to at the moment, because it's not permitted anymore. But uh, that is how it was. So really, it was a very, it was a very rewarding experience. And I think we grew up taking full advantage of uh, what we had gained in those years when we lived in the palace. So oh, um, it's, uh, I mean, a marvelous um, uh, childhood, um, uh, idyllic, uh, beautiful, in, uh, in the company of other children. Great other children. And, and, and you know, it, frankly, um, as when Anuradha comes in and, and talks about the Polish children, we also associated a great deal with, with, the, with the Polish children who were there. They used to, they used to come for Christmas party in, in, in the palace and... Uh, played games. They were so well and so beautifully looked after. And we were lucky enough to be associated with them. Wonderful. And of course, I mean, you really were exposed to the best sportsmen. I was reading, um, um, you know, um, examples and diary entries of the best sportsmen from all over the world coming um, to Jamnagar. And so you had okay. a lot of competitions and so on, really um, improving your skills and so on. So uh, this was pretty much like an English boarding school kind of education. No, quite right. And, and you know, we had English cricket teams coming to India. And India, but, and Jamnagar, they were, they were our guests in a big way. They were taken also to Kileshwar and other places for shooting. And, uh, you know, it, it, was, it, was, it was great fun. I wanted to go back to this, uh, to this image um, here. Uh, yeah, I after know. It, yeah. Uh, one year old there, I think, if I remember it correctly. Yeah, and uh, yes, and we can also see that uh, fathers love their children's toys. <laughs> he was driving around with it too, I so. saw. And yeah, do you so. remember? Apparently, I read something that this was not in India, but it was actually in the UK. Is this correct? Well, I received it when I was in UK with my parents. But Afterwards, it was in Jabnagar, and we were running around Jabnagar yeah, in the palace garden. Yes. So, um, your father, he was very fond of cars as well. And I have another picture here. Um, this is a pen. I'm not sure whether this is uh, correct. I found the reference that uh, Sons Hall um, uh, is a house that your father either bought or rented. It used to belong to, uh, to the Cartier family as well, and then was sold. I'm not sure that this is correct. This is the particular hall. Does it ring a bell to you? No, no bell at all. I must have okay. been too small when we were here. It must have yeah, been the time that the only... star was given, so I would be one or one and a half. <laughs> yes. this, this is a Lancaster that, that was sent to my, my father. Mr. Right. Lancaster used to make these special cars for Randy and yes. for my father. Yes. And um, if you could also tell us about this uh, history of this little car, um, you mentioned that it was given away then eventually. Yes, so this car was given to me on, on my first birthday, as you see over here. And then later on, we had some princely guests living with us who were very closely related. And one of the sons had a birthday. So prompt my car was given to, to the birthday boy. And that was that. I only saw it when we went to Jaipur, otherwise it was not my car anymore. 
So this must have been really hard. So sometimes the princely education well, can also... Think, be really I don't hard. think at that age we really minded. Hmm. We took it for granted that every, everybody shared everything. So the other boy must have been very happy. He was very happy, but the three, <laughs> but three brothers, so they were fighting over it. Uh, but that was their problem. So we have these. Um, do you also remember these um, weekend exp uh, expeditions and um, trips? Yes, yes, our weekend excursions were regular. Even if we didn't go into the countryside to stay overnight, we would be. We would spend the whole day there, either doing shooting or watching, following an animal, and things like that. But I would like to know why are you calling Kineshwar House a war palace? It was not a war palace. It was a shooting palace. It was a palace that you could go and stay in in the middle of the jungle that was there. The uh, hills no. that you see, no, no, not that you see around no. are all, all jungles and you had panthers and all kinds of animals there. No, it was just cut why? off. Right? It's just that Kileshwa Palace and the K, K, K and I is missing. Ah, so, oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, yes, it has a very different connotation now. Yeah. Um, so here we have some images. Um, um, this of is the the images of Rajiv Singh. Yes, Jamsab, the, the famous cricket. Yeah, Jamsab, uh, my, the one who adopted my father. Yes, yeah. So you also have a history of adoption in, in, in the family. And yeah, for seven generations. Yes, and he's, um, um, you know, done also many important things. Let me see. I have, um, uh, he, he studied at Cambridge and he was, of course, a world famous cricketer. He wrote a book about cricket. He really had a big impact on cricket even today. So um, I think it's important to highlight um, all of these, um, um, these things. Um, well, he, he brought cricket in a big way to, to India. Yes. So uh, these That's are your my mother. Yeah. This is my mother you are showing now. I know you had a very close relationship with your father. Uh, perhaps you can tell us a little bit about it. But I no, no, I, I used to think that I had every right to be near my uh, father whenever I wanted. And the rooms we uh, stayed in, my brother and me, but my brother came a little later. Uh, were very close to his office. So the moment he came into, into his office, I used to run there to work with him, as I thought, as we worked in the office. So my father used to give me a block of paper and a red and blue pencil and tell me to get under the table because it was those large tables where you had space in between. And I would sit down there and draw or paint or make, make a mess of whatever thinking I was helping my father do his work. Those were my happiest memories because nobody could reach me there and I could sit quietly with my father. I think I began to learn English with him because he was easier with English as he spent a lot of time in England. So there was a lot of English being passed on to me which otherwise other people all spoke our, our own language, Gujarati. Right. I, um, I never forget what you told me about your father. You said what was right or wrong was clear to him. Yes. And um, if I uh, think about this, and you know, this is actually how I first heard about Jamnagar. By chance, I came across this documentary, and I'd like to then uh, ask Anuradha and to talk a little bit about it, because this was just a story I'd never heard before. And actually, I should mention that a student... Um, um, contacted me, sent me an email recently, and he said he never expected that this story would ever be told at a university. And um, it made me really <laughs> very, very happy to hear this, that uh, we can, um, you know, offer a forum to make all of these stories heard that not so many people know about. Um, it is an incredible story. And uh, Anuradha, you have kind of lived with this. And I know from experience, like a scholar who works on something, it becomes your baby, it changes your life and so on. Uh, the story, the research that you do, uh, perhaps you'd like to tell us a little bit about it. Uh, yeah, hi. Actually, uh, I think all stories uh, choose you. It's not the other way around that you choose stories. And this story uh, specifically actually has chosen me. And uh, as I keep sharing with uh, Harshad ji and Sukhdev ji, 
uh, Harshad ji, who is like a family to me now, that, uh, you know, Jam Sahab, somehow his soul has chosen me for some odd reason. So uh, the story, uh, which is very much prevalent across, I mean, it has more than 1,000 links on uh, Google. Uh, you know, somehow I just had a chance opportunity uh, to look at the story, which was routed uh, through uh, ambassador, then the ambassador of Poland, the India's ambassador of Poland, uh, Monica kapil -Mota. Uh, who knew of my work when she was in India. And uh, she just told me that, you know, this is a great story. Why don't you have a look at it? And uh, like you have shared that nobody in the world knows this unique piece of history because India is a land of stories and we are storytellers, master storytellers. And when I looked into this uh, online, I saw so much material for making a film. And because of my interest in human issues and, uh, you know, uh, about children specifically, I uh, then started my research. And uh, based on my research and talking uh, to Shakti and our family and everybody, uh, a little Poland in India was born. More than Harshadji also, the survivors, the five Polish survivors that you see in the film who are still alive and they are 90 plus and uh, uh, you know they actually built, they had this story within them and when I lived with them for many months and years online and offline, I, they, they were dying to tell this story to the world. And, uh, you know, because for them, even today, Jamnagar is their home, is their first home. And the way Jam Sahab treated them and the way Jam Sahab looked after them, as they called him Bapu, as Harshadji called him, uh, he remains a father to them because he was the father who looked after them at the time when they were termed orphans because their, either their mothers were killed in uh, slave labor camps due to harsh conditions, or they lost their family, or their fathers were prisoners of war. So they were termed orphans in spite of having been born with parents. And these children uh, lived to tell the tale, and they and Harshadji, of course, made the film possible. And it's very interesting to see that uh, your session is built on palaces because I have a very short, unique story to tell you, which people have seen in the film and you may have also seen. The point is that ja now the Jam Sahab, uh, Harshadji's brother and uh, son of Jam Sahab, holds the palace, uh, Pratap Palace, very close to his heart. And he does not allow any visitors uh, to come and visit that palace. And it ironically so happened that, I mean, it's a, it's a long story, but to cut the story, she took me by hand and took me inside the palace. And that is how we were able to film that palace, which you see in the film, all the galleries and Sukhdevji was there, Jam Saab was there, and he just left the palace to me and said, okay, I am going and you shoot wherever you would like to shoot the palace. He also arranged his father's vehicle, which you see in the film, the car, in which uh, Jam Sahib used to travel to Balachari because the camp was in Balachari where the summer palace is. And uh, that car also features in the film. And he specifically, Jam Sahab, got the car for us to shoot. And then he opened the gates of Summer Palace in Walachari, which also is there in the film. So I just want to tell you that it's just, you know, which I attribute to a good soul who did unbelievable humanitarian work, uh, which the world needs, at least today, 
it's a very important chapter in the life of how hu one human being changed the lives of about 1000 polish children and india poland built this strong historical bond and i have been fortunate that you know the film has been shown to various platforms and also fortunate to have found family because even jam sahab now jam sahab shatru shalya singhji uh, you know he just has immense love for me and uh, harshad ji of course i mean it could not have happened if she was not even today i mean you know things which she has done for me uh, you know and for the whole project uh, she has spent hours with us and she she has given her whole time effort to the project so we did palaces both palaces we shot both palaces and uh, you know uh, that was how the film was done in jamnagar as well as in poland which we shot and uh, if you have time it would be really nice to for the viewers to see the trailer of the film i have it yes i have uh, it heard. it would be uh, nice yeah and also i want to of course contribute to uh, a lot of it to both embassy of poland in new delhi and embassy of india in poland i mean there were amazing support there was an indian community you know which was amazingly supportive uh, you know indo polish chamber of commerce and industry uh, headed by an indian jj singh so all it somehow happened that the right people came together to make this project possible it was the first co-production under the first co-production treaty signed between india and poland between ministry of culture poland and india that uh, this project was brought together but on top of that and uh, i am not being so called politically correct at this point of time because when the film was made it was not politically correct but the first person to support the project was who has become the prime minister of the country today mr modi because he was the chief minister of gujarat and he was the first person to support me meet me and endorse the project and support the project so he was the first initiator of uh, having this project put on board to say that yes he is supporting it supporting the story because it comes from his state and it is a very proud privilege for me to say that because only when you have co-production partners who are ready to finance it uh, then only a project like this takes the shape so it was an amazing journey with a lot of archives national archives in new delhi and jam sahab's personal collection which was given by harshad ji and the stories which harshad ji told and inputs by taking out as you can see in the film the polish children the clothes they made for the princess and the prince are very much there in the film and uh, of course as you can see in the film we traveled with the protagonist a polish survivor as we call him uh, stipula who whose family also because i have a family now in poland i have five survivors who's uh, you know so I, it's just that I, something chose me to do to tell the story i don't think such a magnanimous task could uh, have been done by me if it was not good wishes and support of all the all these stakeholders together it's interesting what you say and i think one of the most fascinating aspects is really you know we associate maharajas with splendor with jewels with wonderful palaces but here we have everything we have excellence in the form of sports achievement we have um and these humanitarian efforts in this uh, generosity of the heart and all of this comes together and i think these are not normally stories that you would tell together right because we can also talk about refugees yeah. so, but it's all exactly and you know uh, me me the point is that Uh, as you know through the film that in poland every home mostly every home has 
uh, know the story because one great grand person of their family has been in balachari camp or has been in india because there was a balachari camp of course the initiating of balachari camp made the uh, there was this bigger polish camp in near kolhapur mumbai baliwade which was the biggest polish refugee camp established after jam sahab took this initiative and that camp had women with their children because right. jam sahab only got children who had no parents mm -hmm. but then because he took this initiative about 5000 polish women and children were given protection in india uh, in baliwade mm -hmm. and that was the Found largest you. the polish ambassador in india actually went to the jamsab school in poland i don't know yes he went adam uh, his excellency adam brakowski yes. he is from jamsab school yes wonderful. and uh, that's what i wanted to share that jams uh, most many children there is a big the biggest school in poland in warsaw is the jamsab school and uh, you know so they call him the gold maharaja because they can't pronounce his long name and uh, they have a square over there they have a square which is called uh, good maharaja square and uh, they have a big mon uh, you know sort of a monument where yes. they have written uh, a note of the maharaja or about the maharaja so a lot a uh, poland also has done a lot uh to, to show their obligation to india and to the maharaja and that's how uh, the ambassador initiated uh, a huge event in, on celebrating 100 years of poland regaining independence we did a huge event in jamnagar where these survivors which feature in my film were invited with their families uh, by the ambassador and uh, you know so he did this Uh, he took this initiative to show what india has done for poland and polish people so i think it's a great thing uh, and so subsequently i went ahead also to make a small documentary on baliwade and uh, this story carries on with me it changed my life wonderful um let's continue and um, follow up i'd also like to um, ask the audience to ask a few questions i just quickly wanted to show some of the jewels because really they are so famous and um just quickly go to the uh, some of the images um oh. can you can you recognize this uh, room thank you very much anurad um uh, hashad um yes can, can you recognize this room uh not really because i don't know Oh. I don't remember the carpet. I heard it was called the treasury. This room. Sorry. I heard it was called the treasury, where um, you know, silver was kept. And yeah, and it would have, would have been called the treasury, but we children wouldn't have been allowed oh, right. in it because they would think we would rampage and do yes. things we shouldn't do. Um, here I just have a few images of Ranji um and his book um. this is the um the castle in ireland that he bought which is now a hotel so you know really the story goes out to the whole world and um i just wanted to show this very short um two minute um trailer my great grandfather jack cartier traveled to india many times in the early 20th century as well as looking after clients in britain it also fell to him to look after clients in the british empire most importantly these included the maharajas in india with the wealthiest of most bejeweled men in the world. So as he traveled around the country, he would receive large commissions along the way as the maharajas wanting to keep up with the fashions of the west would give him their family heirlooms and ask him to remodel them into creations in the Cartier style. From the Maharaja of Patiala's diamond necklace to the Maharaja of Kapitola's emerald turban ornaments. These pieces remain some of the most significant creations that Cartier ever made. So I traveled around India and Sri Lanka following in my great grandfather's footsteps and using his diaries and letters as a guide as well as meeting the maharaja's descendants and visiting the same palaces and temples and forts. I also followed his gem buying trail. 
I sat by as they mined in Sri Lanka just as he had done. And I watched as those murky blue stones were pulled from the mud, only to be brought to life with washing, polishing and cutting to gems worthy of the Cartier name. Of the three brothers, it was Jack who was the most knowledgeable about the gemstones. With his eagle eye selecting some of the highest quality coloured stones to bring back to the West, Cartier soon gained a reputation as a jeweller with some of the best emeralds, rubies and sapphires in the world. Sometimes Jack would mix the stones together in a move that was bold for the time, so that bright colours appeared side by side in what would later become known as the Tutti Frutti style. Not only were they a huge hit with the trendsetters of the day, people like Daisy Fellows, but perhaps more surprising is that even today, they continue to break records at auction. So I highly recommend this book by um, uh, Francesca Cartier, um, the granddaughter uh, of Jacques um, Cartier. And I wanted to show a few um, amazing pieces um, um, from the Jamnaga family. Um, this, uh, for instance, the Cartier mystery clock. Uh, do you do you remember this? Well, we we had a few of the mystery clocks that he had made for us individually and for the family. Yeah, this was one of them. But Where the jewelry you were showing uh, earlier is not Jamnaga jewelry. It was more Patiala and Kapoorthala. But the tiger eye was there for instance. Yeah, the tiger, tiger eye was, was there. Tiger eye was yeah. there. <laughs> So uh, this is just really interesting, um, you know, inspired by the magician Odin um, with the uh, kind of free floating um, hands. Uh, do you remember where this clock was kept? No, not at all. And um, here we see the turban ornament made by Cartier and no. uh, the famous necklace with the Queen of um, um, Holland um, um, diamond, uh, which is really world famous. And um, I just wanted to mention, it was actually in inspired a recent movie, um, Ocean 8. And Cartier actually made a copy of this necklace, yes. but not using the colored stones. And here we see um, the, the, tiger, the tiger eye um, that we saw um, just briefly in the Cartier um, story. Here you see your, um, your, your father, right? Um, holding the necklace um, with the... Thank you. Do you remember when, have you actually... Did did you ever look at these jewels as a child or were these so kept away that you never saw them? No, no, this, this is, these I know. Actually, the one in my father's hand, I have worn because we had to take it to be valued in Mumbai. And mummy didn't, was terrified. She didn't know how it would travel safely. I was sent on a plate wearing this <laughs> under, under my clothes so that it wouldn't be seen and one you a gentleman to look after me. Yeah. Great fun. Great. So here we see the, the movie that was recently made and um, the, the current Jam Saab. Unfortunately, he's um, too ill to participate in the event today. Otherwise, we would have loved to have him, of course. Um, yes, and he's a good talker. The picture gallery. Do you, um, Sorry? The, the picture gallery, uh, would, you, uh, would you know, would, would you tell us a little bit about the type of art that was collected or was it mainly... Uh, yeah, very Victorian English. Hmm. Mostly, I mean, nearly 100% of Victorian. Yeah, from the Royal Academy and so on. I think Lachins mentioned it as well when he was in Jamnagar. In this image, I would be really curious, hmm. this uh, bed, do you know this bed? Yes, this, this is a bed that's lying in Ranji's room and my brother has put this picture at the garland. In so which, in which actually, is this? Sorry, in Jambangalo. In Jambangalo it is, yeah, all right. Because it was his home too. Yes, yes. So, so basically after his death, it was kept like this and no one was ever allowed to use it. No, nobody used it. We just passed through it. So I can pay our respects and all his all his favorite things were sort of around the room. Page of his parrot and all those kind of things. And here are the children at a Christmas party in Patapila. And you all celebrated this uh, Christmas party together? All day yes. together, yeah. Oh. But this and was only for the Polish children. 
we didn't have the government the english government people from rajkot or anything it was entirely our family and the, the polish family thanks i'd like to show a short trailer um the little uh, poland in poland in india yes and i hope that um all of the audience um if you haven't seen it in the movie yet the documentary that you will uh, that you will want to watch it after having seen the trailer Jestem na tej ziemi po raz czwarty i nie wiem, czy nie po raz ostatni, ale ta ziemia nie zawsze w moim sercu. Thank you very much um, everyone um, for participating. I'd like to use this opportunity now um, to include the audience. Um, I just go to screen share. I, um, I didn't have the chance to have a look at the comments yet uh, because uh, I was presenting. Um, let, oh, there are many. <laughs> so uh, let me see. Can we, you can also maybe if you want to raise your hand and we can unmute you. Um, this might be possible. Otherwise, I'm trying to um, Uh, may we know in which college um, His Highness Sangram Sinji studied and about his uh, uh, institutions like colleges and schools in Gujarat from Debashish does? RK, RKC to begin with, but then he went off to England to a place called Malvern. Oh, yes. Oh, Francesca is there. That is really wonderful. Um, can we please unmute Francesca? Because I'm, um, I, I, I cannot do this. So, <coughs> Haveri, if you could do this, please. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, perfect. Okay. Hi. 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 Video, but... mm -hmm. Hi. Um, this has been amazing. Thank you so much for, for organizing it. And, and I was just been fascinating to hear you. My grandfather um, spoke very, very fondly of Ranji, who was kind of, I think, a bit like an uncle figure for him and his siblings growing up. And they used to spend some summer holidays when he came over in Ballynayinch, and he was um, and and his parents at his parents' house in Dorking, and um, and then the next generation as well. And he, I think, out of all his father's clients, he said Ranji was the closest friend. They had a real meeting of minds and um, they just loved spending time together. And my great grandmother used to get, um, she used to laugh. She used to say, you leave those two al alone and they'll just talk for days and days because um, they shared, what well, seems they shared the same values, but also the same love of, 
of gemstones and beautiful things, but, but really they were men who really appreciated them and, and, and loved them, um, not, for the, not for the display of wealth, like some of his clients, but genuinely for, for the love of them. Um, so I've kind of grown up hearing these stories um, and I've got uh, letters as well from, from when his parents were in the palace of Jamnagar. And um, so I've kind of, it brings it all to life for me as well, like what they do, what they did every day. And um, so, yeah, it's, oh, hi, I'm on video now. So it's, uh, it was wonderful to, yeah, hear you today and to have that connection to the past. I wish my grandfather was here to, to see it still. Really wonderful. I'm so glad, you know, this, um, you know, venue can actually serve to bring people together like this. And it's really, I mean, I was really stunned, you know, we have the great granddaughter of Sir Edwin Lutchens who found the letter and, you know, um, where Lachin actually even made a little sketch about Jamnaga and so on. And, you know, you brought the photograph, you know, of the nanny and so on. It's just really wonderful. Um, 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 uh, Harshit Kumari, would you like to uh, respond to Francesca? Mm. I'd like to uh, ask you to show us what Francesca looks like. Can we meet her on the picture? Sorry to ask, mm -hmm. I missed that question. Who? Can we meet Francesca? Can she come onto the screen? Oh yes, Francesca, Francesca can, uh, can we see you? Or are you in an embarrassing <laughs> kind of a situation? Or can we see you? Um, and can you turn the camera on? I think, you know, the uh, princess would love to see you. Oh, can you not see me? You can't no, see me? No. no. I thought you could. Um, it says that my video is showing. Um, well, maybe because you have... Ah, yes. Ah, okay. No, because it's not on the screen. Now, I just put you up on the screen. Um, Harshit Kumari, can you see her now? Uh, no, not no. yet. Yes. <laughs> now you're on the But I'm ready. I read her book and I enjoyed it thoroughly. Oh, thank you. I'm pleased. I could do a whole other book about um, about the, the kind of travels through India and especially especially Jamnagar. I've got very overweight that topic. <laughs> yeah, open to this, uh, open to this, <laughs> Francesca. The center. Oh, I love, yeah, well, I'd love to visit it myself and to kind of yeah to see it first time. Well, someday she must come come to Jamnagar and see the Jamnagar. They enjoy. It is no, no, not the same Jabnagar as it was, but you can still see it. She yes. most welcome. Why don't you and she plan to come together in winter? <laughs> yes, when the pandemic is over, we could, um, you would love to organize yes, yes. some excursion. You know, the <laughs> we'll get rid of yes. the pandemic by November. <laughs> Wonderful. Yes, thank you. Um, are there some other questions? I know there are a number of old friends um, of the family um, present today. So we would love to connect you. Uh, if you would like to, um, you know, say anything or make a comment or you maybe you have actually experienced some of these or seen some of the things. Hmm. Nalini Takur says hello um, to um, Harshad, um, which is Hi, lovely. <laughs> So let me just see uh, some new messages. Um, really must have come with Anita. Um, someone asked, uh, would you like to share your memories of the freedom fight and independence? My memories are independent. So I don't think I would like to share them. <laughs> right, and you. Um, Um, let me see any other questions and maybe uh, Kaveri, if you could take some of the questions because I wasn't able to see all of them. I was um, busy or Selma, Kaveri, any of you, if you pick some up. And by the way, um, uh, we actually have a student at the university who's related to the family in Jamnaga. I didn't quite, you know, uncles and cousins is always a little complicated, but I'll, I'll talk to you later about this, which is really nice. Yes. Um, Good. I mean, if you wanted to ask any more questions, we would like to conclude the session. I can take one more. Oh, I have some lovely comments from your daughter. Um, she is so proud of you. You are a star, she says. 
lovely Viveka from Berlin. So this is actually the beauty of using, um, you know, um, such a technology as a Zoom link, you know, so that, um, you know, all the daughters who are in, in different parts of the world, different places, and, you know, friends from different places are able to connect. It's really, uh, really wonderful. Yes. All right. Thank you. So thank you, um, um, everyone, for participating. And again, Francesca, so lovely to have you. Thank you so much for the photograph. It was a big surprise. And um, yes, join us um, next Friday. It will be um, the, uh, whom are we having? The um, um, yeah, um, indoor, the family of indoor will be talking about their properties, the fort and um, also the property in, in Goa. So uh, please join us every Friday at 8 p.m. We will uh, change the, um, the schedule slightly from September onwards because we are having a number of other events. And please connect with us on, on Facebook, um, LinkedIn, or um, 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 through the webpage. I'm always thank happy to- Thank you so much, Mimi. It's been wonderful. Excuse me one you. minute. Somebody asked a question. As to, sorry, may I may I uh, ask, give, give an answer to somebody who's asked, why is Jamnagar called Jam? I mean, why is what is Jam for Jamnagar? Ah uh, yes. Jam is a title. Jam is a title that uh, the Jadajas of Jamnagar who were coming back from some distant trip in the in the Middle East were coming back and they saw. Uh, a, a group of fighters being completely encircled and they decided to uh, support the, the lo loser who was surrounded. So they went from the back and they defeated the ones who were trying to control the, the group that was there. And that happened to be the sake of a little uh, kingdom in that area. So that king was so happy and were, was so thrilled to have been saved at the last moment that he uh, said to uh, the jam, well, he was not the jam then, that you are my jam, you are our jam. Jam in their language meant their soul. So they said, you are our jam, so you, you get the title of jam. So they, call, they carried that title home with them and remained jam till today. You, Shanti, you are my jam. <laughs> Harshad ji is my jam. <laughs> Wonderful. I am taking leave. Thank, Thank you so much. Bye bye, Shanti everybody. Ji, Sai Ram, Sai Ram, Harshad Ji. Sai Ram, Thank you for coming. And take care, and I'm going to talk to you on the phone, okay? Oh, Thank you, everybody. Soon. Love you. Thank you, Mimi. Thank bye, you. bye. Bye. Thank you, Kaveri. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.